Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks, and in this video, we're going to go through mobile optimizing your ClickFunnels sites. What I pulled up here is four different examples of templates that you can download inside of ClickFunnels, all for landing pages, opt-in pages, order forms, that kind of thing. And some of them have some mobile optimization to them, some of them don't. But I'm going to go through and start off with really the easiest, basic, simple things first on how you can mobile optimize, and then we'll kind of build on that. So here what you see is a really big headline for this ad and when we go to click on mobile they have already somewhat got this mobile optimized they made it much smaller so that it would fit onto the mobile display so let's go back to the desktop here and so you see how huge it is here but now let's just click on the settings and let's take a look at what we can do with it so right now they've got 120 pixels and so let's just pull that down and you can see that obviously changes around quite a bit but let's uh let's put it back to 120 where they had it and then they have the mobile size as 32. so let's change that and let's say let's just make that 55. now of course it's not going to change anything here but now if we go into our mobile view you can see it's much larger here and we will click on the gear icon again and let's just bring that back down to the 32 where they had it and so now it makes it small again now one thing I found is if you change this here the font size right here and you click out of course what is that going to do that's going to change the font size right here so we don't want to do that um, the font size for the desktop is always the one that says font size, and then the mobile is always the other. Now, let's say for some reason, and there's a lot of cases where you would do this, we're going to duplicate or we're going to clone this element, and we'll also work on cloning rows and sections, but we're going to clone this element, and we're going to say what we want is this top element. We want this to be our desktop only, so we're going to click on desktop, and then to keep things straight, we're going to come in and we're going to call this, we're just going to call it D1 for right now, and then dash, and then we're going to just call it our headline, okay? You can name it anything you want, but I'll show you why we do this in a minute. And we're going to click on update, and now we're going to go to the second one. And the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to change that name first, because as soon as we do anything in here it's going to, or as soon as we do the next step, I should say, it's going to kick us into the mobile view. So we're going to do this and we're going to click on mobile. Now you see, now we have this one here, this headline here says mobile only, whereas the one on the desktop will say desktop only. So we can come in and we can click on the gear and we can change the mobile to whatever we want and it's not going to affect what we have in our mobile view and the same thing the other way around, we can come in, we have this set now, see, set it as 32 as the font size. But as we drag this, it doesn't change the font size here. You still have to go into the mobile and change the font size there. So no matter what, you always have to go into the mobile, on the mobile, whether you have two separate ones or not, and change it in the mobile. And then this button here, I have clicked on this thing, and I've tried this and tested it different times. And I'm not really sure, um, you know, here in theory, so I move this here. So let's just see here. We set this down to 22 and now go back to desktop and it did not change this here. Let's click on this and we'll, let's see what happens if we click on this. Nothing should happen. Okay. So, all right. So I guess that does when you're in the mobile view, I was playing with this last night and I couldn't get it to work and now all of a sudden it worked. So when you're in the mobile view, you can unclick that little, um, I guess there's a little chain icon there. You can unclick that and then use the, uh, the scroller to change out your font size. So I just learned something there myself right now. Now the next issue I see here is we have this text, and this isn't really necessarily a mobile issue, but we have this text and it's all jammed up against there. So we click on settings and we see that it's set as minus 20 on the top margin. Well, it's that way because over here they wanted to bring it up and get it a little closer to this text. Well again, what we can do is we'll just come in and we'll just do this really quickly. And I will click on clone. So we got it cloned. Now we'll go into our settings. And we're going to say that that's going to be our desktop. And we're going to click on the hashtag. And we're going to say now this is going to be 
desktop two headline and we'll call it that and we will update and then we'll go into the lower one and again we're going to click on the hashtag first this time and we're going to say this is mobile two headline and we're going to click update and then we're going to open it back up again and we're going to make this mobile only so now it's in our mobile view and now we can get rid of that minus 20 just by pulling the bar across and then it will line up down here and look a little bit better and of course we can give it more more uh, margin if we want we can click on this and we can make it any font size we want so as you saw there it was like when I undid that it was like really big even though I said it was only 32 it does that a lot of times it's just kind of a glitch so you just grab the scrubber and you just go back and forth and we're gonna let's just say we want to make this big and then let's even uh, come back in here and let's just center it so now we have that centered. Now again, up here at the top, you have um, the same thing with this uh, Mother Funnel Secrets. Let's just say in this case here, we don't even want this on here because we don't have that much room. So let's just come over here and we're just gonna go into the element and we're just gonna come down to the bottom and say desktop only. Now when we go back into the mobile version, it's not there at all. But if we go into our elements, and we go and click on manage, what you're gonna see is this image, and maybe I should change this, let's uh, change the name of this here. Instead of image, let's change this to logo. And we will update that. So now we come into our elements and we click on manage, and it shows that the mobile, or sorry, logo is not visible in the mobile view, because we are in the mobile view right now. And also desktop one headline, that's not visible in the mobile view, but of course the two that are mobile are, and the two that are desktop are not. And if we go back out of this into desktop, then we have open up our elements, and you can see it's just the opposite, where the mobile is showing as being hidden, and the desktop is showing as visible as well as the logo. So you can very quickly see how naming the different elements comes in very handy. Now you have here section, first column, section, second column. And as you go along and as you build out your sites, it's really a good idea to come in and also name what your sections are. Now in this case here, we have one section, so it's really not necessary to do this. But I would normally come in and call that D1 section because that is our desktop first section. And you'll see as we go along, we're going to show how to also just duplicate entire sections and then um, work on them as well in the mobile view. So now let's take a look at the rest of this page. Now one thing that I noticed when I was looking at this yesterday is we got a problem here. See, we got this, this gal here in the background and she was you know, full here before and now, now she's not. So what they did actually is, let's go into our background settings. They set her as the background for the entire page. So let's copy this out of here. We'll click on copy and what I wanna do is I wanna open up a notepad because what I found, and I always had trouble getting these images to go in there, to copy it somewhere and then put it somewhere else. And I found out why last night, for some reason, it was appending that, um, that quote tag at the end. So let me just copy this again. So we'll, co we'll basically copy it without that quote. And then we're gonna come in here and we're going to delete this out. And I don't think I hit copy once I did this here. So let me just make sure I got a copy of that. Okay, so we got that. Now let's go into our page again and let's go to this section. And what I wanna do is I wanna put that background URL in there. So now we got our background image in the section, not in the page. So now let's see what happens when we go to our mobile. Now I can tell you what happened here is that image is still here. It just pushed her all the way off to the side. Okay, so let's go back to the desktop. Let's click on the image. Let me see, I think I had it 100% width, that's good. Okay, so now let's say though that we had this image 
and she was right in the middle. So when we get to the mobile view, she ends up right in the middle. Well, we don't want her there, obviously. It's going to be, make it really difficult to read what's going on. So what we want to do is we want to duplicate this section. So we're going to come up here, and we're going to clone it. I keep saying duplicate, but uh, it's clone. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say we want to come down, and we want to call this M1 instead of D1. And we will make that M1, and we will take out the word clone. That's not necessary to be there. And we are going to click on update. And now we're going to go back into it. And we're going to tell it we want this to be mobile only. And then we're going to go back into the first one, which we should have done this before we cloned it. And we're going to tell this we want this to be our desktop only. Okay, now let's go back into our mobile view. And what we're going to do in the mobile view then is we're going to go into the section and we're going to completely take out that background image. And now in this case here, what we should have done, and let's just do it real quick. Let's go back into the desktop and let's just pick somewhere anywhere here on the page. We're going to click on inspect and we're going to figure out what color that background color is. And we're going to do that by using the color picker inside of the inspector tool. So all we need to do is find anywhere in here where it's talking about a color, and that's, that's right here. We got a color right here, so let's just click on that. And we're going to see the little inspector tool is highlighted in blue. So we're just going to come over and click back into the page anywhere we want, and we're going to click on it. And now it just told us that that color is right here. And so in order to copy it out, all we have to do is click right here on that big button. It copied it. You can see a little check mark. And now we're going to come back into, oops, let me do one last thing. When, uh, if you come back out and you get that uh, circle with the squares, um, you just come back here and you click on the little, uh, the toggle picker here, and you just turn it back off. Now we're going to go back into our mobile, and we're going to open up that section. And we're going to come down, and we're going to make our background color the color we pulled off of the other page and there now you go so we got rid of that image that was in the wrong position and we picked out what the color would be and we set the entire section with that background color now one last thing I want to look at on this template is the text right here so we go back into our desktop view and you see the text looks just fine here but it's a little uh, whacked out on the other one so let's just click on this again we're going to open it up and inside of the text element, we're going to have very similar kind of a thing. We got our mobile right here. We're going to click on our mobile. And we're going to set it. Now at 14, it should have been fine. Nope, I guess that's still way too big. Let's see here. Oop, and 10 is way too small. So where are we at? See, I, that's what I was wondering. When it was on 14, there was no way that uh, that size was 14. It was much bigger than that. So again, there was some sort of glitch going on inside of there. And so now 32... Let's just keep going down until it fits in in one single line. So at 27, let's even do 26 just to make sure on different sizes of phone. So there we go. Claim my free session, and now it fits in there on one single line. Now let's jump into another one of these templates and let's just first off, let's just go to the mobile view and see what we have in the mobile view. And they did a pretty good job here again. I mean, with me, I would lose the logo or make it even smaller. And in fact, why don't we do that? Let's, uh, let's just say here we got this. Let's clone this one again. And what we're going to do is make the first one. We're going to make that our desktop version. And so we're going to come in and we're going to say desktop only. And, and we're going to say this is our D1 logo. And we're going to click on update on that. And then for the second one, we're going to come in and we're going to say this is our M1 logo. And update that and then go back in and make it a mobile element only which will then kick us into our mobile site. So now let's say we see here it's got an uh, image width of 300. Let's just say we want to bring that down to 200. Um, let's even do 
150 because on a mobile device we don't want to take up too much room so let's just say we're going to make that 150 and so that that'll work real good there let's say um let me see what we got here so that looks fine this looks fine so in our mobile view let's say this headlines let's say it's a little bit big we only want it on three lines so again we can come back in and now again we did not clone this one so we have to use the mobile size we can't uh, do it any other way so we're gonna have to come down we'll do 26 let's see how 28 looks okay yeah, so 28 is what we're going to have to stay with. I'm not really excited about the top line being smaller. I usually like it have a pyramid kind of downward, but that, that's fine for now. You get the idea of how we do it. This, um, this button actually looks okay with uh, the two lines and then the third line at the bottom. That's, that's looking good. But let me show you how they did this image because there's actually two different images here. So we have this image of her right here, and this one is for the desktop only. You can see it's set as desktop. Let's see if they gave it a name. If not, okay, let's just do this. Um, so we'll say, oh wait, no, this was desktop. Um, so desktop one, and um, we'll just say woman. And we will update that, and then when we go back into the mobile view, we have down here, we got that set to mobile only. And then what we're going to do is we'll just say M1 woman being the first image of a woman on the page. That way we know what it is. And then we go into our elements and we can see where those two elements are. So in the, f in the desktop version, it's actually two columns and she is in the second column, but for the, for the uh, mobile version, the image actually got moved into the first column. So let me show you what that's going to look like. So let's just click on this and we're going to put this back to all. So now we can come in here and this is where she is. So you can see that how they designed this was to put the image into the first column. And then in this case here, there's going to be nothing in the second column when it gets into the mobile. And that brings us into really the next thing we have to look at is when you're dealing with multiple multiple columns in a row. So here we have a two column row, but when we go into mobile, you're going to see that she's only down here at the bottom. And the reason why is because there is no second column here. Well, let me put it this way. There is a second column, but we hit it. But even if we hadn't hit it, what would have happened? In fact, well, let me just show you what happens here. Um, so we got, got the image. Let's go to all. So now we have her in both places. Let's then click on mobile. And what do we have now? We have the image that's in the first column, and then we have the image that's in the second column. And that's how it's always going to work, is that what the computer does when you go to mobile is it takes whatever's in the first column, and it stacks whatever's in the second column underneath it. So it's always going to do it that way. And if you have a third column and a fourth column, that's what it's going to do. It's going to stack them on top of each other. So as we go down this page, we're going to see that there is this area here where we have four column row. So what it's going to do is it's going to stack these elements on top of each other when we get into the mobile view. So before we go any further, let me fix these images or they're going to be all out of whack. So let's uh, just come in here, make this one desktop. Okay, now let's go back into the mobile view. And what you're going to see then is those four items that were in those rows are all now stacked nice and neatly on top of each other. Now what you could do is you could come in here and we could do as we did before and let us clone this row. So we're going to clone the row. And so now we have two of them and the same drill as we've done a couple times now. We're going to make the first one desktop and then we're going to change the name. And we're going to just say here again D1 and we can leave it as four column row for right now. And then we'll go into the second one. Click on settings. Come down here and we're going to say M1. 
and take out the word clone. And update that. And then we're going to make it into mobile only. So now we have it in mobile only. But what I found is no matter what you do, you know, I wanted to kind of squish this together and make this into two lines, which of course I could just put a carriage return right inside of the text itself. But what I really want to do is to come in and change the width of the row like you would with anything else. And I thought, well, I come in and I change the left and right. Well, that doesn't do anything. If I can change the width, that didn't work either and um, change the side margin, that didn't work. I even went in and wanted to change the column that it's in, and I couldn't get that to do anything either. I guess the only thing I haven't tried is changing the section, but this is part of a much bigger section, so um, I guess I could put it into its own individual section and then try to squeeze it down. But it doesn't seem to want to be responsive at all once you get this row into the mobile view. So we'll just move on from that for right now. So what else do we have on this page? This all looks okay, but now you've got a question here about this section because I do know that this section here has a negative top margin. So let's see here if we move that margin down what it looks like. Okay, so it is kind of down far. I can see why they put that negative top margin in there. So let's just put that in there and just pull it back up so it kind of frames that uh, image a little bit better. And um, actually here, these rounded corners, I'd probably get rid of those rounded corners. And let's just uh, make that square at the top. And that, I think, looks a little bit better. There's no reason for that rounding. Um, of course, now we did just affect the desktop view by changing that rounding, so you're going to want to check that as well. This background image looks okay how it looked here before. So we had two people sitting out here outside, and it looked okay the way it was. And then as we're going to scroll down further, you're going to again see we got two rows here, so it will stack one on top of the other. So Jesse will come in on top of Jessica, and otherwise that looks just fine there as well. So in this case here, there's not a whole lot we have to do. You could shrink that down if you wanted, but that looks fine. And... Um, and what they did down here is actually pretty interesting because you end up with a two-column row inside of mobile, which can be done, but it's very, very difficult to do, except I just took a second and I looked to see what they did, and actually this was pretty smart, is they actually just used a text element. That's all this is is a paragraph element, I'm pretty sure. It should be a paragraph element or subheadline, actually it is. And what they did is they did something I've never um, done in any of mine before is they made two columns of text. So text columns, two columns. And um, so that's why I broke it out that way. And that's actually quite ingenious to have done that. So that's a good, good use inside of mobile. And I'm going to have to test that with some other elements uh, because it makes a nice little too wide. And as long as there's not too much text there, um, you could maybe even play around with that and see if you could get some images in here, but I don't think so because it's a text element. But So that's it for this one. Let's go and take a look at a couple more because, again, here's one where there's actually some a real big problem. And in case you didn't notice, yes, there is a cat sitting behind me. And um, he's, uh, at least he's not crying right now. He's been sick lately and he's been crying a lot. So he's just happy sitting up there. Um, so with this one here, what I found is there's a couple of issues. And one of them is caused by this. In order to get this to look the way it did, they had to do a minus 200 top margin. So we'll take that out. And it shoots it all the way down here. And the reason why that happens is because they did some special code in here. And this is actually one of the reasons why I really kind of strongly suggest people not use some of these templates because some of them have no code in them at all. Some of them have no custom CSS. Some of them have no tracking code. But in this case here, I don't think this one had any tracking code, but it has a whole bunch of CSS in it. And one of the things it has is right down here at the very bottom, I think it is, it has a clip path and a polygon. And because of that clip path polygon, they have to set the height 
of that element at 250 pixels. So I'll show you what that is. What that does is this here is actually a white background for this section. But what the polygon does is it says, come along here and then scoop down and then come across and then scoop back up. Well, in order to get that to work properly, they had to set the height of this element to 250 pixels. They couldn't rely on just the text and the elements inside of it. They had to set the actual height of the elements. So let me show that to you again. Well, what that causes, so it's actually, it was the row, I'm, I'm sorry, it was the row, not the uh, section. But what that causes then is 250 pixels worth of height that this thing, the next row down, has to compensate for by going up 200 pixels. Otherwise, as we saw, it was way down on the page. Well, the problem is then once we get into mobile view, we got this problem here in that you can't see anything because they didn't compensate for that extra 250 pixels. So let's go back in here and let's compensate for that. So what we wanna do is what we did before is we're gonna come in and we're going to make this desktop only. We are going to then hit the hashtag and what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this D1 and we're gonna say dash section Actually, let's, uh, let's just call this header, and we're going to update that, and then we're going to clone it, and we're going to call this one, of course, M1, M1, we're going to take out the clone, and click on update. And then, um, that's right, we got to go in and we got to turn it mobile. So we'll make that mobile only. And then what we can do is come into it and we need to manage the section. Let me just see. Okay, now that's okay. So now let's go into the rows. And we had a three column row. And so let's get rid of that. And then let's go back into this. And so that's right. I think let's go back to the first one. I do believe that that desktop, um, that I'm sorry, that this first row up here was set to desktop only. And you can see that when we come into the rows, that the first row, it's visible here, but it's not visible when we go into the uh, mobile view. So let's go back into the mobile view. And we'll go up to our rows and we'll manage and we'll see that the mobile view is hidden or that row is hidden in the mobile view. So now what we have is we have our image, we have our Wabash funnel. So let's say in this case here, we need to, let's just get rid of that image in the uh, second in this one here. So we're just going to mark this one as mobile only. And we'll click on mobile only. I'm sorry, not mobile only. We want that desktop only. Okay, so that's desktop only. So then when we go into the mobile view, it shouldn't be there anymore. Why is it still there? Let's see. We'll go here. Yep, that's showing his desktop. It says desktop underneath. Normally, well, that's strange because normally it should be up here like this. Oh, wait a second here. We cloned this whole thing, so I don't have to do that. I can see why it was saying that. Okay, so let's go back into it. We don't have to do this because we cloned the entire section. So all we have to do is just come in and delete it out of here. Okay, so now that's deleted. And then we got our Wabash funnel. And maybe we want to pull that up closer to the top. So let's just pull this down. Let's make it 10 pixels. And this little um, ghost element up here, that shouldn't be there. Um, what will happen a lot of times is these ghost elements will show up in your mobile view and sometimes just by clicking save. So let's just try this here. We'll click save and then we'll exit out as soon as it's done saving. We'll exit out and then we'll come back in and see if it gets rid of that element. And we'll go back into mobile and the element did not go away. So now let's click on preview and let's see if that's causing any problems. Because sometimes those ghost elements will actually cause problems on the site and you'll be able to see them. So let's pull this way down. 
All right, so it's not it's not causing any issues. It's not causing any height problems. If it does cause any kind of problems, what you have to do is you're going to have to go back in and recreate the row, and then well, I'll just um, I'll just do that right now. So I don't want to clone the row. Let's uh, click on Add a New Row, and we got a one column row, and we'll just pop this in here because what happened is it took a it took a three column row actually and turned it into a one column row and so when that happens sometimes it gets all messed up so we'll just pull this all up here and now these two here I think they are left justified so let's center justify them oops that's not what I wanted come on here we go, center. And is there a hyperlink in there? I don't know why we need a hyperlink. Let's break that. Now what happened? Okay, let's do this one. Huh, for some reason it decided to put an element in there. That's crazy. Let me do something here. Let me add a bunch of padding to the top. Um, padding and margin just to give me some room to work and let's just see if we can delete that out okay that worked okay so now let's put the uh, padding and the margin back to zero and there it's looking okay actually we need about uh, not not margin we need we need padding. Pull that down a little bit. Leave the white background. So we have that set. And then we can delete out that section as well. And then here we have a menu. And where this menu really should be, should be above the um, above everything at the top of what it should be is it should be a hamburger bun menu and I will put some additional training in this section where we're going to put in the hamburger bun menu into a mobile device it's really not that terribly complicated there's a little bit of code a little bit of html code and that's it to be able to do that and I'm trying to open up this um, this element and it does not want to open so we're just going to leave that alone for now and so then let's just scroll down the page and see what else we have here. Get this free product. That's probably okay. Maybe center it. Uh, but everything in here seems to be a little off, off center anyway. But one thing I also noticed on this page is as you scroll down, and again, you got these two sections, I'm sorry, this uh, two section row and uh, two column row. And what it'll do again is it'll stack on top of itself. But where did we have it here? In here, again, this is one of the problems I said I have with a lot of these templates, is that they have every one of these lines here has custom CSS telling it to be indented a certain amount along the side. And that's okay if you're a coder and you know CSS and all that. But if you get this and then you decide, oh, I want to put in another element just like this. So let me clone this one. See what happens? It goes over to the left-hand side. And so then you got to figure out, okay, how do I create this code? So I'm going to have to go in here and I'm going to have to pull up the CSS ID selector, which is right here. So you got your CSS ID selector, and then you're going to go into your custom CSS and you're going to have to figure out, okay, which one was it here that they used to push that over with? Well, it was one of these here. And then you got to copy it in and, and all that. So just be careful when you're using these templates because there could be all kinds of booby traps in there that could really cause you a lot of headaches. But again, in, the, in terms of that, though, what I really should say is if you do use one of these templates and you're having a problem, look to see if there's some custom CSS, look to see if there's custom tracking code, and make sure that it's not what is causing your problem. Because even though ClickFunnels gave you this funnel, if you were to go to ClickFunnels support, they would say, oh no, we can't help you because we can't help you with any kind of custom code. So they're not going to help you if there's a problem with the funnel that they just gave you. So just be really careful when you're pulling these up to know what is in there before you start using it or have somebody quickly call if you got a problem with the CSS with stuff not lining up right, with it not looking right, you know, that kind of stuff. So one last thing on this funnel is let's go up to our sections and let's look at manage. 
And so you have here, we got our D1 header and we have our M1 header. And in between here, we have another section for some reason. Let's see what that is. And one good thing to do when you're, when you're not really sure what sections are or what, you know, when you're in this view, just come in here and just click on the hide. Okay, well now we know what that was. This, was, this element right here was this section. And so now we know what that's doing. And the reason why it's up where it is, is let's just take a look at this. And it has a margin, top margin of minus 50. That's what moves it up over the top of the other element. Now, putting elements on top of each other can be kind of tricky. Sometimes you need to just put in a negative top margin. So sometimes you need to change the Z index and the positioning to relative or absolute positioning. Other times you need to tell it to turn the overflow on or off. So um, there's different ways that it can be done. It gets a little tricky, but it, it can be done, especially if you find somebody who does a little bit of code for you. But what I want to show you here is, so now let's go down to this next section. Not, yeah, not this one. Let's just go to this one here. And let's say we want to do the same thing. We want to clone this section in order to make it, um, so we're just going to keep going down the page. Because one of the ways that, in many ways, is kind of the easiest way to do the mobile optimization is just come in and do every single section. So we got D2 section, and we're going to click on update, and then we're going to clone it. And let's go back up to this first one. I don't know if I set it to desktop only. Okay, I did. All right, so now we're going to come down to the second one, and we're going to click on our settings and open it up. We're going to go into the CSS. We're going to make this our M2 section. And we're going to click on update, and then we're also going to go back in and make this mobile only. So we'll click on mobile only, and then you can go in and make any changes you want, and you don't have to worry about anything at all. And then also when you come into your sections, again, you're going to see your D1, M1, D2, M2, and if we keep going down, we would see this all the way down. So one of, I think, the best ways to actually mobile optimize your site is to go into every single section and clone it and make a separate desktop version and a separate mobile version. So then when you come into your sections, you can easily see as you're coming down here, what exactly is which one. And of course, as you go down, name them different things. So if you got one where you have a quiz or a survey, put in the survey. If you got one where you got all testimonials, call it testimonials. So it'd be D2 survey, you know, D3 testimonials, D4 footer. You know, name it out like that so that when you come in here, you can easily tell what they are. But also, as you go into your rows, you will see the same thing. Now, we know here we got M1 header. So this is our mobile header. And here are our two rows inside that mobile header. We got our mobile section. And here we got those two rows. And on down the line, it makes it just so much easier to know what elements you're working on, especially once you start building out longer form sales letters and things like that. Um, it really helps to go in and name your sections and your rows, your columns, your elements, everything, so you know exactly what they are. So again, here, I don't know if this is going to be number three or number four, but we're going to make this desktop. We're going to change it. We're going to say here, okay, so let's just call this D3. Like I said, I don't know how far down on the page I scrolled, but let's just call this testimonials. Let's try that again. Testimonials. Okay, so we got testimonials. So we update that. Now we're going to clone it. Then we're going to go in. And we're going to call this M3 for our testimonials. Going to update it. And then we're going to make it mobile only. So now we're in our mobile only view. And we can take a look at this. And we're going to say, okay, well, let's just change this here. Now you don't have to worry about what's going on in your desktop view because you can just come in here and just start changing everything in your mobile view. So you build out your entire desktop view 
and then you make all of duplicate clone all of your sections give everyone a unique name whether it's desktop or mobile and then you could just come into your desktop or sorry into your mobile version you make all the changes you want and you never have to worry about what's going on in that desktop version so we'll come back in here now here this was this was a two column row and as again as we saw earlier sometimes if you have two column rows that come from the desktop into the mobile sometimes you have a problem and sometimes what you have to do is to create a new just create a new row so we're going to just going to create a new one column row and we're going to pop this down into here and then what we're going to do is just grab every element out of here up on the top and drop it down into here. Now what we're gonna see here, I can see this already, is we got coloring issues and stuff. And why is that? Because we have a column. So let's go find that column. And just to show you what we're talking about here. Okay, so, so again, the old trick here, I'm not sure which one I had. Okay, so here we go. So now let's go into that first column. And we have a background color of white. Let's make it yellow just to show you the difference there. So, all right, let's go back to white. And so that's, that's what you got going on is you got um, different colors. So now let's go to the next column because we can see that the next column, it looks like the background color is going to be an orangish color. So we'll just click on that. And so you just got to come in here and you can change out the color of the background of that column and then set that up. And the rest of this is just text elements and then because we duplicated all of our sections, we'll just keep coming down our page and changing it without having again to worry about what's going on in the desktop view. And then just for our last example, let's jump into this squeeze funnel here. And let me go back in and let me check here. I forget if this one had a bunch of tracking code. No. Did it have CSS in it? No, not really. One, one little bit of CSS. But what you're going to see here is let's preview this page. What you're going to see is, again, this is an example of a template that, that has issues as far as I'm concerned. Because let's, let's see what happens as we start moving this around. So that could be like the size of a uh, uh, you know, tablet or something. And we got problems with the text. We got problems with this image. So again, be really careful about what templates you use. And so let's see what happens when we pop this down. See, now we got a real problem here when you get down into the mobile view is because we got this gentleman over the top of the text and that's not going to work at all. So let's go back in here and see what we can do. So he's an image. Oh, I, I know what happened is, well, no. So he's an image and he ended up over the top of the rest of the text. That's really interesting. Let me see here. Because of his two columns, he should have gone on top of the text, meaning he should be up here and the text should be underneath him, not that he should be overlaying the text. So I'm not quite sure what's causing that. But what we can do is um, we could put him into the background. Or actually, let's see, where is he? Because what I'm noticing here is we have one row up here because you can see uh, barely on the screen you can see an empty uh empty column in a row and then he i bet yeah he's down here so that's what's happening is he's down here and i'll bet you they have negative margin on this oh there you go so it's got a negative 620 on the margin okay well that's that's just not gonna work so um so again, watch out for this funnel here. In order to fix this, I mean, you can't even really fix this thing. Um, let's actually, let's try this. Let's take his image and let's pop him up here. Okay, that worked just fine. So let me see what we can do now. So now let's go into our test page and let's do this. And he should stay just fine. And then when it goes to mobile, he should go above the text, which then in mobile would probably just remove him completely. Okay, so he went above the text in mobile, so that's working fine. But it's still, because that image size is so incredibly large, the, um, the, you got to understand, the, uh, the section here, it wants to resize itself. And the section will resize itself, but that image won't because it's so huge. 
So, I mean, that's, that's an issue. So just be careful of that stuff. So we're not going to really go through completely mobile optimizing this one. I don't really think there's any reason to do it. I think we've gone through enough different examples of how to do things. Uh, again, this, this book is probably way too big for on mobile. This is all laid out nicely. This is obviously just way too big of text right here. So we would want to go into our mobile and we want to leave that as is. And just there you go. Let's just bring it down like that. And again, you know, some of these big, huge images like this, I think are probably way too big for mobile because they're just taking up too much room. But again, I think we've gone through enough and I will end this here. So if you have any questions on mobile optimizing your site, feel free to reach out to ClickFunnels support. Have a great day.